Hi and welcome back to the Citizen Channel. We're all staying safe and well. We're all looking forward to the visit of uh, old Ten Hag's glory boys uh, to our place. Uh, probably not. No, uh, I, don't, I usually say we look forward to the visit of someone, but uh, we just want to get them in, get them out and get them beat, don't we? Simple as that. It's City against United, of course, 3rd of March 2024. Match day 27, 3.30pm kick-off on a Sunday, yes. Yeah, so, yes, uh, be, a few, be a few bevies uh, necked and uh, an interesting atmosphere, that's for sure. So we're going to have a look at uh, how they are doing, or how they have been doing, and what they possibly will be doing. And um, we'll uh, go for a Pepsi 11 as well. Hopefully I'm a bit more successful than the Pepsi 11 for the uh, FA Cup game at Luton. But hey, I, wasn't, I certainly wasn't surprised. And we've got some catching up to do, guys. Yeah, we've played uh, United at home in the league 84 times. We've only won 28 of them. We've drawn 25 and lost 31. So we're, uh, we need to get another win, get that up. But we have scored more goals. So that's uh, at least we're entertaining. 126 we scored against their 111. So we're going to have a look forward to this uh, Manchester derby. Yes, and welcome to Manchester United. It must be a nice little trip for you. Right, please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. There'll be one or two little digs at United still to come, of course. Uh, it'd be great to have you on board. Spread the word, leave us your comments uh, on this derby or anything to do with City. It doesn't matter what it is. I will respond and give you a like. And uh, please, guys, give us a like for this vlog. If you hate United, just give me a like. That's uh, there you go. Should get a few more than usual now, please. If you hate United, give us a like. If you don't give us a like, you don't hate United. So uh, something's going wrong. Right. You're at Beckons, of course, for United. Solidly in sixth spot at the moment. And with Bottle Merchant Spurs three points ahead. And, uh, yeah, it could be Bottle Merchant's Villa eight points ahead. They'll be going all out for sneaking into that final Champions League qualifying spot, won't they? That's uh, normally what they try and do towards the end of the season. They've got a new majority shareholder with 25%. Yeah, I don't know how that works out. Um, of course, it's all about allies, isn't it? But I still think, uh, I don't think he's uh, he's got over 50% even with allies, uh, that's for sure. Mr. Jim Ratcliffe. And he's promising, isn't he? He's promising the glory days, a spanking new stage. Yeah, if the tax dodging, fracking, multi billionaire Chelsea season ticket holder, yes, Jim Ratcliffe can get a loan from actual taxpayers. Uh, that's what he's after. Has he juggled the ball on the pitch? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Anyway, let's get let's get uh, less of this less of this ham poking fun. Uh, although it's nice, isn't it? Uh, we had years we had years of being on the other end of it, didn't we? Uh, recent form, yeah, they beat your Forest in the FA Cup. Uh, I watched the first half; they were pretty dreadful. In fairness, um, we've got to hope we can beat that that rabble. Um, and now they face Liverpool's kids, of course. We'll play Liverpool's kindergarten team next time. So, uh, of course, we've got a trip. Uh, well, we haven't got a trip. Anymore. Anyway, uh, we were playing Newcastle. Before that, United uh, lost at home to Fulham. That's not very good, was it? They beat Luton away 2-1. 2-1? There's nothing that, is it? They beat Villa away 2-1, better than we did. Uh, they beat West Ham at home 3-0. And they beat Wolves away 4-3. So they've been on a bit of a run until that Fulham game. And now they're back on track, of course, having to, having uh, uh, beat Forest at the City Ground. So uh, they'll they'll be, um, yeah, the sort of uh, red and white scarves and the green and yellow scarves will be hidden away just for the time being. Upcoming matches after us, you've got Everton at home, winnable. Sheffield United at home winnable and Brentford away let's hope Brentford can do something but I've no faith uh, I think they have a pretty good away record United don't they top players well obviously top he, he's hit he's hit the straps at last hasn't he he's hit it Hodgland but obviously he's injured now isn't he uh, just just when he gets going he gets injured but hey we, we've had those problems ourselves he scored 13 with two assists McTomin is scored eight with two assists this is before uh, the Forest game I have no idea who scored against Forest for United I've not don't give a toss, really. Uh, Matt Tomine, eight goals, two assists. The Portuguese rat is the Portuguese rat is on seven goals and seven assists. Ganacho is on seven goals, three assists, and Rashford's on five goals, five assists. I think the thing is with this, I haven't watched that bit. I don't watch United much, as probably a lot of you don't, because in the old, old days, when we used to watch him open, he'd get beat. Of course, he always used to win, but uh, now it's probably a bit more often they get beat. But uh, yeah, I still don't watch him, because it's United who wants to watch them. 
But the bit I saw against Forest because I thought I'll watch the first half before I go to bed because it might send me to sleep, and it did. Um, but if the show's respect and fear, we'll beat these lot easy, no problem whatsoever. But if Ten Bob Pep sends them out galvanised with a positive attitude, uh, they can cause us problems. But it's it's up to us, isn't it, to get into them, strike early because uh, if we can sort of get at them early, uh, they will fall apart. It's as simple as that, uh, discipline wise and and actually team wise because they just don't do it. If you look at the Manchester Evening News, which I do to look at the player ratings every week, I do occasionally glance at the United player ratings if we play on the same day. And you know, you've got a mixture of fours, fives, threes, up to you know, six, sevens. You very rarely get all the team at it. So uh, if we're at it, we should be all right. And we also have to, have to be at it off the pitch as well, guys, don't we? That's for me. I think mar- I think they're marginally better than when we beat them at Old Trafford. Only just, uh, the, obviously, was it 3-0? I can't remember now. But, of course, uh, I think uh, we, we've we found or can find an extra gear or two. Of course we can. A bit better against Luton. Uh, shoots, green shoots of, uh, you know, a, a run to st- another run to start. Let's hope but, uh, we've got Anfield uh, soon, haven't we? But, anyway, green shoots of another little winning run for us. But uh, I think if we go up that extra gear or two, which I'm sure we will, we'll be up for this. I think we'll get a satisfying result. But I don't worry too much about United. It all depends on what we do, isn't it? It brings us to our boys, what Pep's uh, team does. Let's have a look at the squad against Luton. Tells if that says anything about the squad he's going to play against United. Well, we had Ortega, of course. He's going to step down, isn't he? Walker, Stones, Akanji, Aki, Kovacic, Nunes, De Bruyne, Bernardo, Grealish and Haaland. The most informative probably was the bench, wasn't it? Edison, Diaz, Doku, Rodri, Alvarez, Gomez, Foden, Bob and Lewis. It was a very strong team for Lou, and that's why I didn't do. I didn't think Pep would go that strong, but he left. He obviously left out certain players that were playing against United. Edison, obviously, Diaz, Rodri, Foden. Uh, though interestingly enough, he left out Doku. Now I've just been trying to pick my Pep's eleven, and obviously without uh, Grealish, without Bob, without Doku, uh, what have we got? What, what option have we got to take on those dodgy defenders of United? So I was playing with the fact of not playing Doku, but I thought for balance and to have him on the flank, it might be very, very important. Grealish, of course, is going to be a big miss because I think Pep wanted him in the team uh, just for his ability to hold on to the ball. Pep, Pep definitely wanted him for this derby match, so that is a big disappointment. Hopefully, Kev, Kev's not too tired after he, he kept him on all the game last time. Uh, uh, why? I have no idea. Um, of course, we talked about Doku, and say his ability to hold the ball is questionable. I think that's a bit more when he's roaming the pitch. I think if you stick him on the wing, if you stick him on one of the flanks or switch him, up, or switch him over to the other, flank case. I think it's, it's when he's coming inside where Grealish is very good at holding it. Doku isn't. And I think as long as you stick him out on that wing, tell him to take players on, uh, fine. I'm not too worried about that. And also the other funny one is Alvarez, isn't he? Has he lost his uh, Premier League aura as, as far as Pep's concerned? I'm not too sure. Uh, I expect, though, to definitely drop out of that Luton start in 11. Of course, Ortega, without doubt. Nunes possibly, although uh, I've done the thing with Ray and he, he, we, I think we put Nunes in the team. So I've thought on again, I just don't see Nunes playing this. Um, of course, uh, obviously to drop out, of course, Grealish, who obviously won't be fit. Gvardiol uh, apparently may be nearing, but obviously he's best still be on the bench. He won't be starting this. So it's really will Pep risk. For me, the big, big question, because uh, I picked 11 without Doku, will he pick Doku? And I, on the balance of it, I've gone for Doku in my 11. But uh, if Doku didn't play, I'd expect to see Kovacic in this, which I haven't put in, which uh, there's just no room. There's just no room if Doku plays. I can't see who, who, who will take over from if you see my 11. Now, my 11, Edison Walker, the Stones, Diaz, Aki. Rodri, KDB, Bernardo, Foden, Doku and Haaland. Yeah, I mean, there's just no place for Kovacic. You wouldn't drop anyone there for Kovacic, would you? I don't think so. We'll see. As I say, Doku doesn't play for Kovacic, but then, you know, Foden and Bernardo on the wings doesn't quite work for me. I think Pep's got Pep's going to have to play Doku. I don't think he'll play Bob. Anyway, let me know what you think, guys. Of course, that's ignoring people like Kanji, who's been playing, uh, Nunes, who I said, and Alvarez, of course, are all sort of wild cards. As I say, Al- Alvarez has been, a, a, apart from the last uh, home league game, uh, has been a regular in every single Premier League start, even though people have cast doubts about it. So, 
But I'll leave him out of this one. We'll see what happens. I, I fully expect to get at least nine with that team. If I get eight, I'll be a bit disappointed. Any less than that, I'll just I'll probably give up again, guys. You know me. Uh, I always say I will, and I don't. I keep going, don't I? Right, on to the prediction. Let me know your 11, guys, anyway. Let me know what you think. Or my 11, and just add all minus whatever you think as well. The predictions, of course, Andy Morrison has predicted. He says, in my heart of hearts, I believe we'll really go to town in this game. I hope so, Andy. If things are as they going as as if things are as they are going into February, but Derby days can be weird. So I'll rein myself in a little and say we'll just win by a couple of goals. Well, yeah, that's fine. We all want to win at see a nice five six goal margin, don't we? But uh, his prediction two nil. He's going two nil. That's seven to one. That's the most popular score line at the bookies. So if you if you've gone two nil, you're in, in company with a lot of other people. Uh, I expect United to score. I hope they don't. And uh, but I think I like Andy. I think it'll just be a two goal margin. So I'm going for the classic. If you like uh, the get out score line, the three one. Which is nine to one. So, what are the rest of the odds looking at? Uh, average prices at the twenty eighth of February, twenty twenty four. We continue to drift. Yeah, only really because of Arsenal uh, firming up all the time. They come in, you know, they've, they've been they've been absolutely uh, being hammered. Uh, Arsenal, of course, the bookies have had to respond to it because they're in some good form, and yeah, uh, no surprise. So we're actually odds against now. Uh, we're struggling. We just about got evens last time we talked about it, but now we're eleven to ten. Um, uh, from evens in a place, you know, so there are still people at evens, etc., and, and odds, odds on, but uh, you can grab 11 to 10 if you're careful. Liverpool are also uh, have gone out slightly, as I say, only p because of the money for Arsenal. Uh, now you can get 23 to 10 uh, generally from 2 to 1 on Liverpool, and of course, Arsenal. I think there was something like eight, ten to one uh, a few weeks ago, and now now into three to one. They were four to one last time I did one of these, so and that's only about a week ago. So they're now three to one, uh, sixteen to five. You can get in, in a place as well. So all the money's for Arsenal. United, a top four finish. Uh, the bookies are expecting that twelve to one. Uh, as I said, I wouldn't be surprised by one because you know what United are like. I just. You know, after us, will probably win most of the games and, and scrape through with uh, Villa and Tottenham falling apart. But uh, top four, 12 to 1. So if you're an United fan, you think you can still get top four. That's not bad value. Top six, even, is uh, the, all right, the six at the moment, uh, four to seven on. That, that's doable, isn't it? I'm um, surprised if they do eventually drop out the top six. So. Four to seven, or even if you don't mind betting odds on, that's all right. Uh, match odds: City are two to seven on. Generally, a draw is five to one, and you get nine to one in United. A uh, couple of other little uh, things: uh, popular score lines, of course, two nil. As I said, was the, was the most popular. Uh, two one is the next at eight to one, and a three nil score line is seventeen to two. You fancy what we did last year? Six three. Um, yep, yeah, two hundred to one you can get on that. And a couple of hat tricks, wasn't it last year? Uh, Harland hat trick. Uh, you can get. 12 to 1 in a place that's just, that's all right isn't it 12 to 1 uh generally 11 to 1 and phil folden hat trick of course he got one last season get 100 to 1 so yeah fill your boots guys so let me so let me know if you're having a go anyway and i'll certain if you have a, have a bet on this so there you go uh my little thoughts on the upcoming manchester derby let's just hope we win it I, 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 it can be a, it can be a deflection in the last minute for me i mean i you know, I'm a bit more confident with derbies than I used to be, but uh, as I say, we've got to get our home record improving, haven't we? So if we win the next step uh, four, we'll go ahead on wins at last, uh, you know, over all our league games. But uh, yeah, that's that's the hist that's that's in the future. Who, who knows? Who knows what might happen? Uh, Mr. Ratcliffe might do the business. Hey, you don't know. Uh, who, who's to say? Anyway, let me know your thoughts, guys. Great to hear from you. And uh, let's do it, eh? Well, I've only got one thing to say, really. Please uh, check out my player ratings and talking points shows. Uh, story of the game on Sunday and Monday. Hopefully, a bit happy with a happy face. Of course, out soon uh, on Monday will be the Pepsi 11, the preview for the Copenhagen game, of course, the second leg of that, and fast on the, fast on the heels of that, uh, a trip to Old Anfield, which, hmm, I don't know, let's see what score will come up with, score prediction for that one, I'll see what, I've not looked at Andy's yet, I'll have a look at that, I'll have a sneak peek. Thanks for watching, guys, let me know your thoughts, uh, I only have one more thing to say, and that's as, uh, please stay safe, Blues, and... Come on, city. Bye for now.